Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that engages us this morning is the gospel reading from St. John chapter 9, where we see the story of the blind man who was healed. Now, a former homiletics professor of mine once preached on this text in a way that I would never forget. For he opened my eyes to see the power of being brought into a story bigger than my own, and the incredible gift of being given a story to share with others. So the story that John gives us begins, As Jesus passed by, he saw a man, blind from birth. The story begins with a very profound moment of Jesus seeing a man. He sees his pain, his hurting soul. He sees his needs. His disciples, on the other hand, didn't see a man. They saw his problems. They saw his defects. They saw his sin. They don't speak to him, they just talk about him with one another. And the only story they can come up with is incredibly small. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Who sinned? That was the best they could come up with. No thought of giving him food or clothing, no sign of compassion. They jump straight to connecting a sin to its punishment. Let's make sure that gets straightened out first. How often do we do the same thing when we encounter people on the street? We see the tattoos, the piercing, the clothing, the car, the house. And we cast our judgments without actually seeing the person. The human being standing before us with a story we know nothing about. We can spot the sin immediately. All the while we miss the person standing before us. Jesus answered them. It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. The disciples couldn't see what Jesus sees. When Jesus looked at this man born blind, he saw a much bigger story, one that didn't begin with sin, but one that begins long before this man had been born. The story that Jesus sees begins with creation, and it ends with restoration. And when you see a story that begins with creation and ends with restoration, everything that happens in between is God entering into a broken creation and bringing to it life once again. Jesus then does a peculiar thing. He stops talking theology and he starts living it. He spits into the dirt to make some mud and he gently places that mud in the man's eyes. I mean, just picture it. The Son of God who was there when the Father created and formed the heavens and the earth, and He fashioned man from the dust, He is now continuing His work of redeeming and restoring that creation, now fallen in sin. The same God who formed this breathtaking world and filled it with wonderfully diverse plants and animals has entered into His creation to continue that same creative, incredible work. In the life of this blind man, and Jesus heals him. You know, this is the kind of work that Jesus came to do. And it was for the work like this that, that he was willing to die. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came so that the world might be saved through him. Jesus didn't come to point out this man's sin. He came to take that sin upon himself and instead give this man life. And he does the same for you. Through this seemingly small story of one blind man being healed, Jesus seeks to bring you into God's greater story of creation 
and restoration. He wants you to be able to see the much bigger story that you are a part of. That baptized into his death and resurrection, you are children of God. You have died to sin and are alive to righteousness. You are no longer slaves to sin. You are servants of righteousness. And so living in God's kingdom and living not by the limits of your mind or take, talking about people, but rather living in the greatness of God and talking with people, seeing God's greater story that is unfolding in their lives. Yes, God, Jesus draws us into God's greater story. A story of redemption, of restoration. And he also gives us a story to tell. See, the narrative that John gives us, it begins with Jesus seeing a man, and it ends with a man seeing Jesus. And that man sees Jesus in the story that Jesus gives him to tell. See, Jesus tells this blind man to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And then Jesus disappears into the crowd. The blind man goes to the pool and he comes back seeing, but what exactly does he see? I mean, if anything, this man's life has just become much more complicated. As he sees the extent of the mess in his life, the mess around him. I mean, as he walks around the streets, he now sees his neighbors and the onlookers who are staring at him, trying to make sense of his restored blindness. And the neighbors and the onlookers, they just start talking about him. As though he isn't even there. Is this the guy who was blind? I, I think it's him. No, no, it couldn't be that guy. But he, he definitely looks like him. All the while, he tries to tell them the story. I am he. I am the man who was once blind. This man called Jesus put mud in my eyes, told me to go to Siloam and wash, and so I went and washed, and now I see. And they ask him for proof, to show them where this Jesus is, and when he can't, they, they bring him before the Pharisees. And the man's parents didn't get involved, as they are to speak of... Uh, how he had been formerly blind as a child, to try and speak on his behalf. But what do they do? They disown him. They, you know, don't bring this on us. We don't want to be bothered with any of these complications that have come with. He's an adult. Go and speak to him. And because this whole ordeal happened on the Sabbath, this man must also stand before the Pharisees and, and give a full account for everything that's taken place. And the Pharisees examine him again and again and again to test this man to see what does he say about Jesus. So much so that they eventually kick him out of the synagogue and say to him, you were born in utter sin and you dare lecture us. But he wasn't lecturing. He was simply telling his story. I once was blind, but now I see and the more this man tells his story, the more clearly he sees Jesus. James writes, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. This man, by telling his story, he draws near to God, and Jesus draws near to him. You can see it with, with the progression of every time he tells this story. The first time he tells the story of this man uh, that, that was simply called Jesus. He was talking to the neighbors, the onlookers. He was simply a man called Jesus. The second time he tells the story to the Pharisees, he describes him not as a man called Jesus, but as a prophet. And then the third time that he tells the story again to the Pharisees, he then proclaims that this man surely came from God. And then the last time, as Jesus finds him outside of the synagogue, having been kicked out and abandoned, the man looks at Jesus and says, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus has taken this man's mess and turned it into a message. He took his weakness and made it into a weakness. And the same Jesus brings us 
into the greater story of God's kingdom and gives us a story to tell. How has God brought you here? What work has God done in your life? What story has He given you to tell? I would venture a guess that for most of you, that story does not involve some prosperity gospel, that when you came to faith in God, it removed all the problems from your life. No, if anything, the story that God has given you to tell probably contains a mess like the story of the blind man. A story that involves pain, suffering, heartbreak, complications in a birth a failed marriage, a struggle with addiction. Your story is marked by life in this broken world. You have the scars to show it. But no matter how dark it becomes, your story begins with creation and ends with restoration. And this Jesus who has given you a story to tell He does not leave you to tell that message on your own. He has taken your mess and turned it into a message. He has taken your weakness and turned it into a witness. For He is Lord of all. Having captured all sin and having taken it upon Himself through death on a cross, He has risen from the dead to create new life in you. And so you are living witnesses of God's creative and redemptive story. His work in this world. Jesus has brought you into God's greater story. And as Jesus has given you an incredible story to tell. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.